if there's a really big important thing about which waves are put in the ground because the wavelengths of said waves put in the ground will dictate the potential step voltage dangers. If you're not familiar with what step voltage potential is, it's similar to when a down power line is hitting the ground and the really high voltage, but not quite high enough voltage is high enough that the resistance of the ground is high enough that the voltage drop over any short distance is so high that if you're walking along that path, the voltage between your front and back foot is high enough that it'll short circuit through our conductive water body instead of the short path through the high resistance ground. That step voltage can kill you. Trick most people don't know is that if you are near down power line, you're either supposed to like slowly shuffle your feet really, really short or you hop. Don't hop too far because if you fall and land across it, your body will be shorting out like that. Why this is important now, this is a big moment. It was kind of really clicked to me. And this might, might actually be proof to how long back in time this technology has been used by humans. So the smaller the wavelength, if you're using this, this system for wavelengths in the ground, if the wavelength gets too short, where you have a high voltage to a low voltage between your front and back foot, the longer the gait of any animal, the sooner or more likely they are to get hit by these stray voltages. Why this is important is, I'm pretty sure this explains just about every single cow mutilation there is out there. Because I think they've been testing this system going, going through the ground and have either been doing like out at Skinwalker Ranch where they put a bunch of cattle in a pen and they call it the bait pen. They were doing target practice with this weaponry because you can basically cause heart attacks on anyone anywhere you want. The floor is lava. And by doing so, they were inadvertently sending out stray currents and I'm sure they probably hit some cows they weren't meaning to hit. And as such, they had to go out there and dissect any part of the cows that would give way to any electric currents or any electric arcs or any electric burns or any damage to the body from electric arcs. And why, why that's important is you would cut the front of the face off because the tip of the tongue, the nose, would be the wet spot where electrons would come out, the ears, the genitals, and the tail. All of which are generally, I believe, are told to be, or talked about being removed in these mutilations. I'm not going to go any further than that because I know there's a bunch of woo-woo about it, but I'm pretty sure this is a pretty simple explanation for all of these, especially if you go look into the history behind all this, is it does seem to be a bunch of cover-up for a bunch of other stuff, and you can't really tell, and they say it's all natural. But I do find it interesting that the thing that's removed from all of the body parts are all things that would be the thing you would find electric burns from, or burns on it from electric currents. And any normal veterinarian would be able to diagnose electric burns. But so, we can explain... What happened to all the mammoths? They have the biggest, they would have the biggest gait on this continent. I don't really know of any other animal that has as big of a gait as a mammoth. It's, we think it's been about 10,000 years. If they were using this technology and they started using waves too small, it would have electrocuted all the mammoths. They would have all died. But everything with a shorter leg gait would, would stay around. I don't know. It's just, a, you know, it just makes me think. Naturally speaking, if these wavelengths were going through the ground and some man-made objects or, or man-made things were doing it or causing it, it would cause electrocution of animals whose gait is long enough to receive that electrocution. We know what happens with cows. We know what happens with us. Why wouldn't it happen with larger animals? And could that explain why there are no animals left on the continent that have that large of a gait? So the whole time editing this film, I'm just like, why the moose? Why did the moose not? Why, why, why would the moose stay? They have horns, they're antlers. It might've been a, a specific arc point that was sharper than anywhere else on their body that if they ever did get electrical potentials going through their body, would come out the antlers. 
Mm hmm. I just thought the one hole in this I do think is I why the moose other than it looks like moose never came below where the snow was also so if they're walking around on the snow it might have been an extra layer of insulation between them and anything in the ground 